Hey everyone, we're back with another reaction video and today we're checking out more of George Carlin with the bit Life is worth losing. Yep, I don't know what it's all about, but I'm sure we're gonna have a laugh and think. Yeah, okay. sure. <laughs> with George it. Carlin, you do. <laughs> but say what you want about America, land of the free, home of the brave. We got some dumb ass motherfuckers floating around this country. Dumb ass motherfuckers, you know? <laughs> Already, already. Now, obviously, that doesn't include this audience. I understand that. Ah. <laughs> you seem intelligent and perceptive, but the rest of them, holy jumping fucking shitballs. <laughs> Dumber than a second coat of paint. <laughs> and this ain't just ranting and raving. This ain't just blowing off steam. I got a little evidence to support my claim. It just seems to me, seems to me, <laughs> that only a really low IQ population could have taken this beautiful continent this magnificent American landscape that we inherited. Well, actually, we stole it from the Mexicans and the Indians, but <laughs> hey, it was nice when we stole it. I it uh, looked pretty good. Uh, it was pristine. Paradise. Have you seen it lately? Have you taken a good look at it lately? It's fucking embarrassing. Only a nation of unenlightened halfwits could have taken this beautiful place and turned it into what it is today a shopping mall. A big fucking shopping mall. You know that? That's all you got. That's all you've got here, folks. Mile after mile of mall after mall. Many, many malls. Major malls and mini malls. They put the mini malls in between the major malls. And in between the mini malls, they put the mini marts. And in between the mini marts, you got the car lots, gas stations, muffler shops, laundromats, cheap hotels, fast food joints, strip clubs, and dirty bookstores. America the Beautiful, one big transcontinental commercial cesspool. And how do the people feel about all this? How do the people feel about living in a coast-to-coast -coast shopping mall? Well, they think it's just fucking dandy they think it is cool as can be because Americans love the mall they love the mall that's where they get to satisfy their two most prominent addictions at the same time shopping and eating Ooh. millions of semi-conscious Americans day after day shuffling through the malls shopping and eating especially eating Americans love to eat they are they are fatally attracted to the slow death of fast food Hot dogs, corn dogs, triple bacon, cheeseburgers, deep fried butter dipped in pork fat and cheese whiz, mayonnaise soaked barbecue, mozzarella patty melts. Americans will eat anything, anything. anything. I felt like adding a beat to it. Yeah, he's rapping. In my mind, I was adding the beat. <laughs> anything. If you were selling sauteed raccoons assholes on a stick, oh. Americans would buy them and eat them. Especially if you dipped them in butter and put a little salsa on them. This country is big time, pig time. Forget the bald eagle. You know what the national emblem of this country ought to be? A big bowl of macaroni and cheese. Mm. A big bowl, because everything in this country is king size. King size, extra large, and super jumbo. Especially the fucking people. <laughs> Have you seen some of the people in this country? Have you taken a good look at some of these big fat motherfuckers walking around? <laughs> big fat motherfuckers. Oof. Oh my God, huge piles of redundant protoplasm <laughs> lumbering through the malls like a fleet of interstate buses. The people in this country are immense, massive bellies, monstrous thighs, and big fat fucking asses. And if you stand there for a minute and you look at one of them, you look at one of them, you, you, you begin to wonder, how does this woman take a shit? Oh, and this is actually 2005. Imagine what he's gonna say today. <laughs> Everything is so, you know, the ass. Really, and, really, ooh. really, yeah. Man. Wow. What a prophet. Oof, yeah. How does this woman take a shit? <laughs> how does she shit? And even more frightening, how does she wipe her ass? <sighs> Can she even locate her asshole? She must require assistance. Are paramedics trained in this field? And standing right next to her, of course, with a plate full of nachos and a mouthful of pie is her clueless fucking husband, Joe Sixpack. With his monstrous swollen beer belly hanging dangerously out over his belt, beer belt buckle, this guy ain't seen his dick since the Nixon administration. Nixon. And if you stand there and you look at the two of them, you begin to wonder to yourself, do these people fuck? 
Is this man actually capable of fucking this woman? It doesn't seem structurally possible that these two people could achieve penetration. Maybe they're in that Cirque du Soleil or something. I'm telling you, the people in this country uh, every half, of, every, every one of them is 50 pounds overweight. They are gargantuan. Ooh. And in the summertime, God help us, in the summertime, they all want to wear short pants. Jesus, Lord, protector of all that is good and holy, deliver me from fat people in short pants. <laughs> they all got short pants, big bellies, fat thighs, and dumb kids. Short pants, big bellies, fat thighs, and dumb kids. Every one of them got kids. two dumb ass kids with them. And the whole family is wearing T-shirts, and every one of them's got the same T-shirt. I'm with stupid. <laughs> Apparently in this country, the stupids are an extended family. And besides wearing them T-shirts, everyone in the family's got on a backpack. They got a backpack strapped to their back so they can carry around lots of stupid shit. And the reason they got to carry their stupid shit strapped to their backs is because their hands must remain free at all times to hold food. <laughs> and to get that food up to the mouth where it gets shoveled in with all the rest of the disgusting shit they ate that day. And another reason for the backpacks is these people are gonna buy even more stupid shit. They ain't got enough stupid shit at home. They just had a stupid shit sale. They ain't gonna buy more. They're gonna go out in the parking lot and stuff this stuff into the big, fat, ugly, oversized SUV that's got plenty of room in it. Plenty of room in it for stupid shit and lots of room left over for these big, fat, ugly motherfuckers to get them home. Stopping, of course, for jelly roll and fried dough. These people, these people are efficient, professional, compulsive consumers. It's their civic duty, consumption. It's the new national pastime, fuck baseball. It's consumption. The only true, lasting American value that's left, buying things, mm. buying things. People spending money they don't have on things they don't need. Money they don't have on things they don't need so they can max out their credit cards and spend the rest it? of their lives paying 18% interest on something that costs 1250. <laughs> and they didn't like it when they got it home anyway. Not too bright, folks, not too fucking bright. But if you talk to one of them about this, if you isolate one of them, you sit them down rationally, and you talk to them about the low IQs and the dumb behavior and the bad decisions, right away they start talking about education. That's the big answer to everything, education. They say, we need more money for education. We need more, more, more books, more teachers, more classrooms, more schools. Uh, we need more testing for the kids. You say to them, well, you know, we've tried all of that and the kids still can't pass the test. They say, oh, don't you worry about that. We're gonna lower the passing grades. Ah. And that's what they do in a lot of these schools now. They lower the passing grades so more kids can pass. More kids pass, the school looks good, everybody's happy, the IQ of the country slips another two <laughs> or three points, and pretty soon all you'll and need to get into college is a fucking pencil. Ah. Got a pencil? Get the fuck in there, it's physics. <laughs> then everyone wonders why 17 other countries graduate more scientists than we do. Education! Politicians know that word, they use it on you. Politicians have traditionally hidden behind three things, the flag, the Bible, and children. No child left behind, no child left behind. Oh really, well it wasn't long ago you were talking about giving kids a head start. Head start, left behind, someone's losing fucking ground here. <laughs> but there's a reason, there's a reason. There's a reason for this, there's a reason education sucks, and it's the same reason that it will never, ever, ever be fixed. It's never going to get any better. Don't look for it. Be happy with what you got. Because the owners of this country don't want that. I'm talking about the real owners now. The real owners, the big wealthy business interests that control things and make all the important decisions. Forget the politicians. The politicians are put there to give you the idea that you have freedom of choice. You don't. You have no choice. You have owners. They own you. They own everything. They own all the important land. They own and control the corporations. They've long since bought and paid for the Senate, the Congress, the state houses, the city halls. They got the judges in their back pockets. And they own all the big media companies, so they control just about all of the news and information you get to hear. They got you by the balls. They, they spend billions of dollars every year lobbying, <laughs> lobbying to get what they want. Well, we know what they want. They want more for themselves and less for everybody else. But I'll tell you what they don't want. They don't want a population of citizens capable of critical thinking. They don't want well-informed, well-educated people capable of critical thinking. They're not interested in that. That doesn't help them. That's against their interest. That's right. They don't want people who are smart enough to sit around the kitchen table and figure out how badly they're getting fucked by a system that threw them overboard 30 fucking years ago. They don't want that. You know what they want? They want obedient workers. Obedient 
workers, people who are just smart enough to run the machines and do the paperwork and just dumb enough to passively accept all these increasingly shittier jobs with the lower pay, the longer hours, the reduced benefits, the end of overtime, and the vanishing pension that disappears the minute you go to collect it. And now they're coming for your social security money. They want your fucking retirement money. They want it back so they can give it to their criminal friends on Wall Street. And you know something? They'll get it. They'll get it all from you sooner or later because they own this fucking place. It's a big club and you ain't in it. We watched this you clip. and I are not in the big club. By the way, it's a... We watched this clip. About the... Uh, the Americans and the education. Yeah, I remember it. The last part only, yeah. Yeah, they, they here, they used to beat you over the head with all day long when they but tell I you what to, to believe. Them. All day long, beating you over the head in their media, telling you what to believe, what to think, and what to buy. The table is tilted, folks. The game is rigged. And nobody seems to notice. Nobody seems to care. Good, honest, hard-working people, white collar, blue collar, it doesn't matter what color shirt you have on. Good, honest, hard-working people continue, these are people of modest means, continue to elect these rich cocksuckers who don't give a fuck about them. They don't give a fuck about you. They don't give a fuck about you. They don't care about you at all, at all, at all. Yeah, you know? And nobody seems to notice, nobody seems to care. That's what the owners count on, the fact that Americans will probably remain willfully ignorant of the big red, white, and blue dick that's being jammed up their assholes every day. Because the owners of this country know the truth. It's called the American dream, because you have to be asleep to believe it. Oh, hard, man. hard, hard to swallow. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> the, <laughs> this was not comedy. I felt like <laughs> bar after bar. <laughs> I felt attacked. <laughs> I feel, I, I feel like I want to attack. I want to attack everything and everyone. I agree with him. Yeah, I yeah. want to attack. Like yeah, wake I'm, up. I know you're angry. You're angry. Yeah, I feel the Oof. anger. I, I, I wasn't know. ready for this. I was expecting some comedy and to laugh, and then I was angry. This made me really look angry. Yeah. Now I don't want your opinion, and I don't want to talk about the whole thing in relation to America. Yeah, like I want to talk about everything he mentioned and how it applied from. The beginning of our life until now, even here in our part, you know? Yeah. This is not only applicable in America, that's what I always say. And I think this can only lead to one conclusion. Politics is never put, is never here to uh, serve people. It's only to for interest, personal interest and, you know, wage wars. And they don't care about the people. They only care about themselves, you sure. know? Because it's not only in America here. They want people smart enough to you know and then dumb enough to do another thing so yeah. they want they shit. want you to be ignorant they want you actually yeah we get that a lot really i really relate to that to the part of the education and the part of being ignorant uh, and you feel like they meant for it to be like that like they intended it can't be yeah. it can't be randomly put yeah, like this it has to be a bigger plan there has to be a bigger plan yeah. and it has to be directed i actually felt like this bit is divided into three parts at first he talked about food over there like people yeah. the consumption of food and people the malls overweight. and everything like shopping and and this yeah, is like a shop. true disease and then he talked about education and then the politics so you feel like it's the system is programmed and like designed to be like this to make people cheap. He mentioned it, you know, like, yeah, you don't control anything and you keep electing the people who don't care. If voting can make a difference, they wouldn't they allow you to do it. Like, do there's it, no like. democracy. And there's Fact. one a quote in Arabic. I don't know. I'm going to translate it in English. Like democracy lets you um, bark. Uh, lets you like shout and I want this like it gives you the illusion of uh, freedom of speech and then nothing changes and then when you're living under under a dictatorship they won't let you have a freedom of speech so it's the same you know conclusion on the one hand you scream and shout I want this I want this and nothing changes yeah and on the other hand you don't you even have to shut not. your mouth because <laughs> you're not you, you cannot speak yeah. so it's 
Nothing is serving people. <laughs> Politics, yeah. politicians and governments only care about themselves. They do. And, and they I, do. I always notice that people want one thing and then their governments want and uh, do another thing. Yeah, you know? they do another like thing. Like in America or even in Europe or other countries, like the people are really nice and then you have the government Like you are electing the government, and yeah, they but are what doing. Are, why are they doing other, th- yeah, yeah, other so things than wh- what really they promised my mind. You, when you elected them? Yeah, There's always mind. a hidden agenda. But nothing I feel will change. Nothing politics. will ever change. They don't want it to change. They they want you to keep needing them. This topic you know? really made me mad. George this, Carlin, you know? yeah, you don't get to laugh a lot. I, I'm, yeah, really, every time. I'm I needed like, a laugh. I'm being you educated. I'm taken to church with that man. I'm, but I love him. I love him very much. Yeah, me too. Like he got the that topics. thing, the thing. Even when you look at him, eye to eye, uh, eye to eye. I don't know if if, if I can call eye. it. Eye, yeah, if I can <laughs> call it eye to eye. But I'm really, I'm really. When I look at yeah. him, I feel, I feel him. I feel the honor, the honesty, and the whole thing about him. He's you know? so honest. He's a genius. This bit was in 2005, and that it's really applicable in today. Like in 2024, it's the same thing, and even worse. Like it's yeah. getting even. You know, the snowball <laughs> is getting yeah. larger. Come on, yeah. Oof, oof, so I, I don't know. Truly, 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 I'm gonna take my virtual hat off for you, man. He's uh, a genius. He's yeah, a I look forward to to hearing truth bombs even more every time. Every time. Of George Carlin. George Carlin, you are not a comedian. You are a Prof. teacher. Teacher. You are a yeah. teacher. Yeah. I love him. I love mm. him so much. Yeah, man. Uh, looking forward for more. Made me angry. Not. Happy, but, <laughs> yeah, yeah. but is, yeah. maybe we should be angry. <laughs> we yeah, are educated. Down, yeah. We should. We are educated. We should be angry. Man, we can talk forever, but now we're gonna have to wrap it up. For any recommendation, make sure to drop down in the comment below and don't forget to like the video. And of course, our journey with George Carlin will definitely continue. So stay tuned for more.